Okay, so this is a little homework stream I decided to do. And basically, I have this university mod, which involves doing data analysis on film data. And I made an init.r file with basically all the answers and explanations. So the functions could be recycled for different movies slash data sets. And I sent it to the whole cohort. Done. The whole cohort is covered. And so I sent this init.r file. And I got about five brainlets asking me how to open it on Mac. And then another five bonobos messaging me with a fucking error because they didn't change the dot read cs read dot csv line. And for a bunch of fuckers who probably use the internet all day, compulsively, you know, almost to addiction-like levels, they sure as fuck don't know how to use it to get answers for their problems, which is I, which is really fucking weird. Now, I don't mean to come off as an asshole, but fucking hell, just search up your error message. You want to become intelligent and competent with technology? Just learn to search up your fucking error messages and you're good to go. Or use chat GPT instead of just blindly messaging me with errors because when you magically press a magic button on your computer, everything works the way you want it to. That's not how computers work, okay? Now, okay, whatever. Forget the disclaimer, let's get into it. I'm going to make a stream basically explaining this init.r file, and this is going to be a very good tutorial slash instructional video into R itself. So let's get into it. So you can see, I, I use DWM because I'm a real G, and these are basically the questions. So you can see section one over here. Okay, I'm going to skip the first one, not really necessary, and okay. Choose one of the numerical numerical variables, recording, monitoring. Okay, so in order to do that, okay, let me explain what's actually going on here. This is going to be a very unstructured video, but just follow along and you'll have your entire assignment done, no problem. So what this line essentially does is this makes a new variable called DDF, which is basically the data set. So if I press, press leader N, I open up my file tree and you can see, okay, mine is called group five film data dot CSV. Now yours might be called group four, group three, group two, mine's called group five. Okay, so that's what I'm going to call. It. I'm going to press leader D to run it. Now, some of you brainlets are probably using RStudio because you cannot wrap your head around Vim, which is actually very easy to learn, but whatever. What R is, is basically you run these lines through the R console. So R is actually just a console here like this, and then you do you can do something like read.csv, and then the path to the directory. Now, it's going to give an error. So what this is basically doing is I'm basically doing that through NeoVim. So I don't have to use the mouse to move my character or whatever. And you can see the output of that on the R console on this window right here. Right here. This is where the output is going to be. You can see the highlighting. Okay. So now I'll just print head the data. And you can see the movie data right here. All of this is the movie data. These are the, the column variables and shit. And okay, let's get to it. So first they want, okay, first they want a summary, they want summary statistics on one of the numerical variables. I chose production budget, which is represented like this. So I do summary DDF, which is the name of the data, which we assigned earlier. And I do dollar sign production budget. So I'll show, okay, there you go. This, I'm going to, okay, let me press control V to go into block visual mode. So this is what I want summary statistics for. Okay, so I'm going to run this line and look at that. I press I have screen key to show you can follow along if you know about Vim or whatever. Okay, there you go. The, these are the summary statistics. Now what I did is I copied all of this into a .tech file in the verbatim environment. And you can see how I've answered the first question right there. All the summary statistics are right there. Done with the question. No mouse needed. No book. Okay, now now let's go to num question number three. Now this is a very complicated question to do if you want to do it with a graphical user interface. But if you know a little bit of programming and you know a little bit of R, you can just have the programming do all the magic for you. Now I don't actually know R. I got all of this just by reading documentation and chat GPT. It's really easy to learn. At the beginning of this module, I did not know a single R command. Okay, so let's see how to do that. Consider a film to be big budget. If after, after adjusting for inflation with reference to CPI in 2022, the budget exceeds 200 million, which is eight zeros, and not big budget otherwise. Use this information to create a new category goal variable in the data set which classifies whether move. Okay. So that's just an if else statement. So you can see here, if else, DD, this is a new column called profit. I'm making a new column. If else, worldwide gross divided gross or whatever the fuck it is, divided by three times the production budget is more than one. True. False. Now let's run this. Okay. Now let's do table. Table is a very useful command because it shows you the amount of data points within each, um, like column variable or whatever. So let's run that and okay. Now we can see. Look at that. 
we got this many big budget and non big budget movies. Okay, done. Question. Now let's go to the next question. And okay, hopefully you get the idea of what I'm doing here. Basically, you can see over here how I've put comments representing which question is which question. And essentially what we are doing is we are running the code. Okay, and R is going to do all the computation for us. The only line you really need to change is this line right here. Okay, you need to change this line to match your exact uh, data name. So for me, it's a group five. For you, it might be some some other group. Group 69, group 420, I don't fucking know. Whatever. Okay, now let's do some more questions so you get the basic example. Now, you can see that all of the programming is written right here. All you need to do is you need to run each one of these lines. Okay, and once you run the line, you're going to get your answer. Now, obviously, if you open this in RStudio, it's not going to be as efficient, it's not going to be as minimal, but you can open this in RStudio, and it's going to do the damn job for you. You don't need to worry about anything else. It's even going to do plots, and it's going to export plots to PNG format. So you can see PNG, all plots PNG. So this question, okay, this is actually a pretty complicated question. So you can see here, take into the consideration of the number of movies in each genre and make box plots for the duration of movies based on their genre. Give a short description. Okay. So now to do something like that, so what you do is, they're going to be, so first we need to turn time into some kind of numerical variable. You can see this time is in a very strange way. It's in this weird string format. So what I did is I use regex to turn it into, okay, so let's run that. Let's just run unique to see what kind of weird funky data sets we're dealing with. I do that. Okay. Did I go through? Yep, it did. Okay. Now hours, minutes, total duration. I do hours times 60 plus minutes. So this converts all of it to minutes. And then you can see it went through. And then I get, and I see the NA values. Now there are 21 NA values. So out of the 1,099 values, 21 of these uh, durations failed to convert properly. That's not that significant, so I don't think it necessarily matters too much. You can mess with this regex expression more if you want to, but quite honestly, I don't think you have the attention span for it, so we're just going to skip that anyway. 21, not too bad. And then you just run this command. So you do leader D to run this. Okay, this makes a new device. So whatever we end up plotting is going to be put into that PNG. You can actually see a PNG called all plots right here. Uh, we're just going to make a new one. So I'm going to press leader D and I'm going to run all that. Okay. Now it says error could not find GG function GG plot. Now that is because we forgot to run these initial lines. So do not run this line. Do not run this line or maybe, okay, maybe you'll need to run this line to install. Now I already have it installed in this directory. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to use lib paths to tell R where to look for the packages. And then I'm going to go down here and run library GG plot too. And you can see in the R console, there it is. Okay, now I'm going to go all the way back to that same question. When I started doing that, let's just pattern search for it. Okay, GG plot. Okay, pattern search. Next, next. Okay, there it is. Oh, and then you can pattern search with forward slash, forward slash, whatever. All right, let's do that again. Leader D, leader D, dev all. Okay, so now what we basically did is we just made a new plot in the PNG plot. So let's actually see that. Okay, this is what the PNG looks like. All right, so now once we did that, that's basically the most complicated part done. Now, I'm not going to go over every single question because all of it is in the init.r file, but basically this is how R works. And you can do this with NeoVim. It's going to be way faster, but whatever. You can do it with your R Studio, which is a very inefficient way of doing it. And again, for more and more questions, you can see how the complexity of the question increases more and more as you go down. You're going to have to do more calculations. Look at question number three. Okay, I'll quickly go over that section three right now. So classify movies with the following rate, following ratings. Rating is a column variable as G, PG, 13, whatever, as family movies and movies rated R as non-family movies and conduct a suitable hypothesis test at the 5% significance level to determine if there is an association between family movies and movies that make a profit. Okay, so to do that, we basically need to do a chi-square test. And I'm going to show you guys how to actually do that. Okay, so this is question nine, extra analysis. So first, let's just do head the data just to see how the things look. All right, then we do family. And again, we're using the same if else statement here. If the MPAA rating is either one of this, PG, PG13, or G, we give it a true. If not, we give it a false. Why are we using true, false instead of string? My bad. It is a string. It is going to be unstructured. Okay, head DDF, table is family. Okay, table DDF family. Okay, now this is going to show us how many movies are family and how many movies are not family. Okay, profit is the same thing. Production budget more than one. We already ran this line before, but whatever. Now table profit is going to show us how many made a profit, how many didn't make a profit. This one shows us how many are family, how many are not family movies. And now we're going to make a contingency table. Okay, run that and make the contingency table, which is basically making a table with these two. And okay, you can see it right here. Now this row right here 
is basically non-family movies. If you add both of these together, <laughs> 420, hee <laughs> hee, plus 175, you will actually get 595, which is the number of movies that are not family movies. So yeah, just this might confuse you a little bit. Across is family. We put family first over here. And so naturally, in English, you write from left to right. So they're just going to write false, the number of family. So family is basically across. Okay, we made the contingency table. Now let's conduct the chi-score test. And this is how you do the chi-score test. I run this line pressing leader D. I, I want to see the chi-score test result. I'm going to press leader D. Okay, now this, this is our stuff. Degrees of freedom is one, which kind of makes sense because a contingency table has two columns and two rows. Two minus one times two minus one is your IQ. <laughs> And we have a p-value. Now this p-value, I can use it in my report. And I can, and because this p-value is less than the 0 0.05 significance value, there is an association. Okay, there you go. That's your chi-score test done. So we can do very complicated questions like this without using a mouse with a few commands. And I can recycle this for question nine, which is what I was talking about earlier. I basically wanted to see if there was an association between fam animation movies and family movies. That's what the last question was doing. Okay, now, if you're a regular viewer of my channel, you are probably, you probably don't exist. You know, there's probably like five of you. But I just wanted to make this video to explain the init.r file and basically flex what R can do. Now, there are going to be some people in the comments who say Python is better. Maybe it is. Look into that myself. But basically R can do a lot of work as well. My university, for some fucking reason, tells you to use Radian, which is a GUI interface for R, which is stupid. Doing basic simple things like this with simple R commands is going to take a very long time. Now again, you don't have to be an R wizard. You just have to know how to use the internet. You have access to chat GPT and you have access to the internet. R has been around longer than your balls have existed. So there's going to be lots of documentation and there's going to be lots of forums and wikis and help on how to use this programming language. Whatever you want to do, someone else has probably done before. So there probably exists a function for it or uh, a forum question post about it that has been answered. So you don't really need to worry about any of that. I would recommend doing things from the command line all the time because it is just way easier. I don't have to worry about using my mouse. There's no mental overhead to get easy things done. And communicating directly with the R console is just far easier than using some kind of GUI. You can see how I did the chi score test. And there you go. This is my, this is my entire report. I got the image. I got the questions done and I'm going to refine a little bit and I'm going to touch it up and then I'm going to submit it soon. Okay. I don't think I've shared any sensitive information in this video. Please don't sue me. But point is, this is the power of R. And if you're somebody who is, who received this init.r file, well, hopefully this video can give you a better idea on how to use the damn thing. Or you can, you can slave away on Radian trying to figure out how to do basic shit. Either way, thanks for the video, thank you for your time, and please stop using graphical user interfaces, they are for idiots. Bye.